everyone, my name is Giovanna Proens and today we're going to talk about the project of week 5, Traffic of CS50 AI. So for this project, we're going to write an AI to identify which traffic sign appears in a photograph. This project will be pretty similar to Shopping, the previous project we did, where we were receiving a CSV file, creating a model, and with this model we were able to uh, had some predictions about the output. Now we're going to do the same, but instead of a CSV file, we're going to receive a bunch of images. And with those images, we're going to predict what is a particular image. So we're going to predict and see if we have a good positive values or we, if we have, if it's not so accurate. So I will show you how this project will work. I already run here uh, the our code. We're going to see all of these uh, lines here in our terminal that will be loading because it's reading our images and doing the calculation in our model. And then it will print the accuracy of the project. All right. You can play around a little bit with the accuracy because it will depend on how much parameters you will add in your model because we're going to be working with convolutional neural networks. So depending on how many filters, how many pulling and flattering uh, functions you will call, it will give you more accuracy or not. So this is a little bit more open-ended, but we're going to play around a little bit. Okay. I already downloaded here the source code, so you can download by clicking here. You also need to download the, the folder with all the images we're going to work. It's a traffic sign, if I'm not mistaken, for Germany. So we're going to receive a lot of images with the traffic signs and our model will predict which traffic sign is about, all right? Once you download, you need to run this pip install our requirements because we're going to be using uh, TensorFlow. Okay, so as we can see in here, this is our GTSRB folder. In this folder, we have from zero to 42 categories of traffic signs. All right, if you open up here, we have a lot of traffic signs in this file called .ppm. I will show you what this is if we open up in our computer. So our goal is to load in all those images. Once we load those images, we're gonna separate into test and uh, train. And then we're going to create our model, we're going to train the model, and then we're going to predict outputs. All right. So let me show you a little bit the one image that we have here open. So this is our GTSRB folder. As I mentioned, we have 43 categories of traffic sign. If I open up the first one, we have a lot of different images of the same traffic sign of 20 uh, miles per hour or kilometers per hour. And here, as you can see, they are in different definition of image. It can be uh, with more pixels, less pixels, it can be more defined or not. If we open up another traffic, another folder, we're going to see another traffic sign. So the goal is to fill in our model and we're going to predict the traffic sign with those images. All right. So before we start, let's take a look at the code, the source code they already gave to us. So this is the source code they gave to us. We are importing some libraries that will help us out to do the code. We're importing NumPy, we're importing TensorFlow, this OS that will help us out to read the images and standardize them in a particular width and height. And we also have the scikit-learn to train, to split our set of images into train and test. We have the epochs 10 image width 30, image height 30, so we were going to standardize all the images with this width and height. The number of categories is 43 because we have 43 types of traffic sign and these 43 types of traffic signs are in here in those folders that it starts from 0 to 42, as I already showed you the images. And we have a test size of 0.4. So this means that 60% of our traffic signs images will be used to train our model and 40% will be used to test and predict and we can see how accurate is our model. All right. In the main function, they already defined. So here we start with this checking the command line arguments and why we're doing that. Because we're going to run our code this way. We're going to write Python as we regularly do, the name of the file, and we need to send the name of the folder where our images are. So this is why we're checking the length. And if we don't have exactly two command line arguments or at least three, because you can also run your code using something you can add another word as they mentioned like model.h5 where you can start the model but we're not going to focus much on that the main goal is to run our code with traffic.py and gtsrb that it's our folder with the images then we are creating here two variables images and labels that will be two lists 
images will contain all the images and the labels will be the labels of our model. And we're going to load in using the function that we will define soon. Once we have the labels, we're going to use this, the, the TensorFlow library to make this categorical. So separate this in categories because we already have the idea of 50, 43 categories. So 43 different signs. And then we're going to use the train test split to split 60% of our images and label for train, 40% for tests. Then we're gonna use our function get model where we will define our neural network. Then we're gonna fit the model with our train data. Then we're gonna evaluate our model using the test. And at the end, if we are sending a, a, a file, we're gonna display the model in that file. If, if not, it will just display in the terminal how accurate it was and other information that might be useful. Then we have the load data function. So this load data function, we are receiving a parameter that is this data directory where this data director will come from. It will come from sys.argv on position one. If you don't remember from CS50 Python, for example, or CS50X, they explained that sys.argv is a library where we can get the elements from the command line. So this sys.argv is a list without the command line arguments and position one means that we're opening up GTSRB. So we're gonna receive the word GTSRB. Our goal is to load all the multiple images we have inside all those 43 folders, all right? And we're gonna display, we need to read those files, we need to standardize them in the correct width and height, and we're gonna put them in lists. So we're gonna return this tuple images label that we're gonna get here when we call the function. And images will be a list of all the images in the data directory, so all the images we have in the folders. And we're gonna format in the way that we saw, so 30 on width, 30 on height. And this number three dimension, it's because we have three types of color, the RGB, red, green, and blue. Labels will be a list of integer labels representing the categories for each of the corresponding images. So the traffic sign with 20 miles per hour will be the category zero. Images of 30 miles per hour will be category one. So here we're giving some idea of category. Here we can organize the traffic sign according to what they mean. And then that's pretty much what we're gonna do. All right, so we're gonna do step by step using this OS library. So there's not much that I can explain. We're just gonna use some functions to help us out. All right, so I'm gonna remove here this race not implemented and we're gonna start storing the folder. So we only have the string GTSRB. We're gonna convert this string into an actual path of our folder. All right, so to do that, I'm gonna create a variable called category directory. Oops, actually, before that, I jump one step. We're gonna create two lists, one list for images and one list for labels. So images equals to an empty list, labels it's equal to another empty list. After that, we need to do a loop in all the categories we have. We know that GTSRB has 43 categories, so we need to loop one by one here. We're gonna loop through the first, uh, the fo first folder we're gonna get inside, we're gonna read all the images they have, then we're gonna go to the second folder, we're gonna read all the images, then we're gonna go to the next one until we reach the folder 42. So this is what we have to do. To do so, we're gonna do a loop. So for category, I'm gonna call category because the category is the number of the folder in range. And instead of writing here the number 43, we're gonna use the variable num categories, all right? So we already have this global variable, num category. So here we're doing a loop and in every iteration, category will be zero, then will be one. And so this way we're getting inside of all those folders. Then as I mentioned, GTSRB, the number zero, they are just strings and integers. We need to convert them into a path where our code can get inside and see the images. So to do that, we're gonna call category directory or you can call category folder because we're gonna get inside of this particular folder. And to do that, we're gonna use the library OS path.join and we're gonna join the name of our folder that is GTSRB, but here we're calling data there. And we're gonna join the word, the number we are working. So instead of displaying the number zero, we're gonna convert into a string. So this way it's kind of, we're doing the following. I wanna get inside the GTSRB folder zero. This is exactly what we're doing. And then folder one, folder two, folder three, and so on. So this is what category director is. Then we need to check if this folder exists. I know it exists, but in programming, we always need to be aware. We always need to be checking if things are going well, because sometimes unexpected things happen. So here I'm going to do a if 
os.path.dir and this dir we're gonna try to check if this folder really exists so category directory we're, we're trying to get inside of the folder and now what we're gonna do we're gonna now that we are inside we're gonna check one file at a time okay so to do this part of getting inside of one file at a time we're gonna do a loop because we don't know how many files we have so we need to do a loop so for file name file name in and here again we're gonna use another library from os list dir so it will give us a list of all the files we have in this folder and the name of the folder is category directory then we're going to get the image path so if you see here they have a pattern they start from 000.ppn, 01, 02, and if you open up the others, they always start from the same thing. So we, the, we, they have a pattern for the files and it make a little bit easier for us to access. So to do that, I'm going to create an image path variable where we're going to say os.path.join, the same thing we did for the folder, but now to find the, to create the word for the image. So here it is, image, oops, category, and the file name. All right, so we're creating now the following. We're doing, I'm gonna add a comment. So in this part, as an example, it will be gtsrb slash zero. And here this image file, as an example, it will be gtsrb, gtsrb zero. And we're getting the first file. So for example, zero, 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 another five zeros dot ppm. So this is what this line is creating. It's creating this string that we can access the image path. Once we do that, we're going to read the image. So I'm going to say here, image is equal to, we're going to use the CVS, CS, let me see, CV2, if I'm not mistaken. The name of the other library is CV2. And this library will allow us